Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. You can see we are starting Chapter 9, and the biggest thing I can tell you about Chapter 9, Section 1 is this. It is by far the most crucial section, guys, that we are going to cover. But what's really neat in terms of what you guys need to know, it is just a review from what we've talked about from Algebra 1. And if some of you have already had Algebra 2, it's just a review of that stuff. But it is crucial because what we do in Section 1 with these things right here will come up in all of the sections from Chapter 9, all of the sections from Chapter 10, all of the sections from Chapter 11, and you guessed it, all of the sections from Chapter 12. That's the end of the year, by the way. So you need to make sure that this stuff is clockwork, man, like you've mastered it. This is extremely critical. I haven't mentioned it already in the first minute of this video. So here we go. You're going to be able to kind of review. They're not really essential questions, although they kind of are. This is what we're going to talk about. I call them oldies but goodies because you've already, you've already seen these plenty of different times. The first one, simplifying radicals. What we do when we go about simplifying radicals. Second thing, what's this mean when we rationalize the denominator? What is that when we do that? How does it look? What's the purpose of it? Multiplying, adding, and subtracting radicals. When you can, when you can't. Um, how you do it, all that type of stuff. I'll give you an interesting analogy too that should make you kind of understand how to multiply radicals. And the last thing is everybody's favorite, that's why it's in capital letters, people. And there's a pretty little smiley face right there, don't forget that. It is quadratics. Oh, yes, when we factor, um, solving quadratics, quadratic formula, and pluses or minuses, and all that stuff. Now, here's what I'm going to do for you I'm going to go over all of the letter C's from page 368 and I'm going to do numbers 1 through 8 so 1C, 2C, 3C you get it dot 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 up to 8C and then of course we're going to practice over and over and over different types of things in class so without further ado my friends let's get started so here we go first thing and by the way everything that's up here you need to make sure you write your notes oh my goodness yes have it ready for class because here we go so the first thing is to simplify, as you see, simplify the radical. It's not going to say solve, it's not an equation. How do you simplify it? Well, remember, we've seen a couple questions in homework like this already, where we've taken this square root. Now, if, if this 72 is a perfect square, phenomenal. You can get the answer, but 72 is not. So you have to break up this 72, if you remember, into two radicals, where when you take this number times that number, it gives you 72. My suggestion, find the biggest perfect square that goes into 72. And that happens to be 36. So write 36 right there. I, I would suggest, as a hint, put that perfect square on the left side. And then over here, this is just a 2, because 36 times 2 does give you 72. So what's the deal then when you do that? The square root of 36 is just a 6. And the square root of 2 is just a 2. Now, I'm going to give you a silly analogy because sometimes people get confused with this. Follow it. If you treat the square root symbol like jail and you think of these numbers as being in jail, follow this. The only way that you can get out of jail is if you become perfect. Aha. So if this is 36, which it is perfect, perfect square, therefore it comes out of jail, so there's no square root around it. However, you don't go like this and say, hey, the square root of 36 is just 36. No, 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 my friends. Listen, there's a price to be paid. <laughs> there's a price to be paid if you've been in jail for 36 years. Well, that's a long time. So what happens is you're, there's a price to be paid, yes, but the square root symbol is gone, but it goes down to a 6. You all know mathematically 6 squared is 36, but that's the concept. Because sometimes people forget whether they, they don't know if they put the square root symbol over it or what. Listen. It's 6. This one, the square root of 2, my friends, 2 is not perfect, so it's got to stay in jail. And this will be the final answer right there. Now, some of you might look at this and say, wait, Mr. Mother, isn't there a different way to do it? And I would say, oh, yes, there is. You could take this 72, and another way to do it would be this. You can break it up into a perfect square of 9 and a non-perfect square of 8. That's awesome. Here's how it works then. 9, oh, it's perfect, so it comes out of jail. And there's a price to be paid, so it goes down to 3. The square root of 9 is just 3. 8, mm, that's not perfect. So it just stays square root of 8. Now, you're going to say, wait, Mr. Mater, that's not the same answer. 6 root 2 and 3 root 8 
is not the same. I would agree with you. But hold on, my friends. Let's go a little bit deeper with this. You can take, sorry, you can take the square root of 8 and you can break that up into maybe two different square roots where one of them is a perfect square. And yes, that's right. You can make this 4 and that 2. So this 3 comes down for the right because I'm taking 3 times the square root of 8. So basically I'm taking 3 times these two guys, which is just the square root of 8, just broken up into two things. So let's do my jail analogy and simplify this a little more. The square root of 4 is just a 2. This 3 stays there. That 2 is not a perfect square, so it stays a square root of 2. So when I take 3 times 2, whoop, that gives me 6 square root of 2. And there you go. Both of them are perfectly fine. Awesome. Now, you might be saying, which way is the better way? doesn't matter to me. My suggestion, however, is this. When you break up this 72 into your two factors, make one of them the biggest perfect square that you can find. That would be the most, mm, the quickest way, the easiest way for you to do it. It's not the only way, because you can see that this still works. Now, hey, let me give you an analogy or an idea, because some of you might look at this and say, why did we go further here? Why did we take that a little bit further and simplify it? Well, here's a simple example. Listen, if you got a fraction in any type of a question back in elementary school or middle school and got six twelfths, you would say, oh, I need to simplify or reduce that a little more. So maybe you can take and divide 2 into the top and 2 into the bottom. That's great. That would give you a 3, and that would give you a 6. Now, you would never stop at 3 over 6. You would keep going. You would keep reducing. You would keep simplifying it, which would give you 1 half. That's the same concept here. You took this 72 and simplified it to this, but you've got to keep going if you can. And here we can. So you can keep on going through this to this to get to that answer right there. So keep on rocking by simplifying that. So there's that one. Let's go to 2c. This is a tricky one because some of you look at this and say the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared. Some of you are going to fall into the trap and I'm going to beg you, no, 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 don't do this. You cannot take the square root and the square and just cross them off and say, oh, cool, I'm going to get 3 plus 4, which equals 7. It's not how you sound, but whatever. That is not correct. How do you do it? Well, the only way you can do it is you have to use your order of operations. So, you would actually get this. The square root of 3 squared, which is 9, 4 squared, which is 16, add them together, get 25, and oh, 25 is a perfect square, so it becomes out of jail, and it price to be paid. <laughs> so there's your answer, 5. You cannot do this. Square root and square cancel out. Why can't you? Well, one, you see you get the different answer, but two, you cannot do it if there's an addition there, and you cannot do it if there's subtraction. You put it as multiplication, but you can't do it over addition or subtraction. So there's 1C and 2C. That's rock and roll over here to something different. Now, you're going to see I'm skipping 3. There's a reason why. 4C kind of goes along with what we just talked about by simplifying these things, because the only way that you can add or subtract radicals is if they have like radical parts. That's the only way that you can again add or subtract. Now you look at these, that's square root of 12 and that's square root of 27. They don't have the same radical. They don't have the same number in jail. So you cannot get this and say, oh look, I'm going to get the square root of 39. No, that is not the same thing. So how do you do it? Well, you have to simplify this square root of 12 and you have to simplify this square root of 27. And hopefully, we're going to find that we can get like radical parts. Well, let's do it. The perfect square that goes into 12 is 4, and that leaves 3 for there. If I simplify that down more, square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 3 just stays square root of 3. 3 is not a perfect square. Over here, I can break this up into the biggest thing is 9, perfect square, and 3 not perfect square. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 3 just stays 3. So if I added these together, now, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking. Because now if you look at this, I got like radical parts. And I'll give you an analogy so you remember this from Algebra 1 and see how you do it. This is a scoop. If I had 2y plus 3y, you would call them like terms. I would too. You can add these together because they're like terms. And when you do, you would get 5y. That is how that worked in Algebra 2. In Algebra 1, whatever, really Algebra 1. But here's the idea. Same thing applies with this. That root 3 and that root 3, you kind of treat it as the y. They have like radical parts, so you actually take and add the coefficients, if you will. 
So you get 5 root 3, and that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is your final answer. So there you go. That is 4C. Let's go back here. Now I'm going to do 3C. But before I do 3C, let me explain how we multiply radicals. Because when you multiply radicals, here comes my jail analogy again. You see the square root of 5 and square root of 7. Now this is not in your book. I'm just putting this in here so you can get an idea about how you multiply. The square root of 5, 5 is in jail. 7, it's in jail. So, since these guys are in jail, I can then take them and multiply them. So I get the square root of 35. Now that's awesome. I can only do that because, again, they're in jail. So can I do anything with the square root of 35? Well, I need to try to find two things that 35 goes into. Uh, well, yeah, the two things goes into 35, sorry. And nothing, there's nothing that I can do with it. That's it. Let's simplify it as much as possible. So this is my final answer. Over here with this one, the 2 and the 5 are out of jail. So I can actually multiply those together and get 10. The actual... 3 and the 7, they're in jail. So I can take and multiply those together. The thing is this, anything that's in jail, like a 3, you never multiply to something that's out of jail. Never do that. So this one would actually then go to the square root of 21, because 3 times 7, square root, 21. This is your actual answer. That is awesome.